Hello everyone. Today we continue to read the Bread of Life discourse from the 6th chapter of John's Gospel. Just before the discourse, John relates to us that Jesus out of compassion had multiplied a small amount of food that is five loaves of bread and two fish into an abundance for many thousands of very hungry people. And as a result, the next day the people sought for Jesus and could not find him in the place they were fed. Nonetheless, eventually when they found him with his disciples in Capernaum, they asked him when he had arrived. Instead of answering their question, Jesus told them that they sought him not because of who he is, but because of what he can do for them. He told them not to be so concerned about perishable things like food, but for the food that lasts for eternal life, which he as the Son of Man will give them. They immediately thought of Moses, who gave their ancestors the supernatural bread, manna, every day for forty years in the desert and demanded Jesus to give them such food, so as to make them believe in him and never be hungry again. But Jesus corrected them by saying that it was not Moses who gave the food, but God the Father. Friends, Jesus then told them that those who ate the manna died eventually anyway, but those who would eat of the bread that comes directly from God will never die. When the crowd heard of such a thing as the bread of God that gives life, they asked for it always. Sadly, the spiritual meaning of Jesus' words still eluded them. They were more concerned with the condition of their stomachs than the condition of their souls. When they asked him for this bread, Jesus startled them by saying, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. In other words, Jesus is the bread that God sent to earth so that they might gain eternal life. Friends, the people consider Jesus' claim to be the bread of life not merely nonsense but also rather blasphemous and they also began grumbling among themselves over his claim of heavenly origin. Jesus ordered them to stop grumbling about this because he said that no one would come to him without God drawing them, without being taught by God and only those who hear and heed God would come to him. Friends, Jesus went on further than simply associating himself with bread. He said that the bread which he will give is his own flesh for the life of the world. Many of the hearers perhaps perfectly understood what Jesus was saying, but they could not believe that what he was saying could be true. They were arguing among themselves, how can this man give his flesh to eat? Friends, there is no direct statement in the Bible that says, Thou shalt not eat human flesh. However, there are some biblical practices and principles that suggest cannibalism is an evil thing. In the Old Testament, God gave specific dietary instructions to man. For instance, after the flood in the time of Noah, God permitted man to eat the flesh of animals and birds along with seeds, fruits of plants and trees which are permitted since the beginning of the creation. However, God's warning to man not to shed any human blood, for he has created all humans in his image, is construed as God's prohibition against eating human flesh. In addition, the law of Moses specifically forbids drinking of blood. For the life of every creature is its blood. Its blood is its life. Friends, Penalty for violation of any of the law was expulsion or excommunication from the tribe. So the Jews regarded the eating of someone's flesh as immoral, unlawful, repugnant and outrageous. But Jesus did not relent, nor did he soften the blow. Instead, he pressed on even further by saying that they should also drink his blood. Friends, to the hearers, this was even more repulsive. Despite their dissent, Jesus not only reiterated the statement, but also strengthened it by saying that they would have to eat his flesh and drink his blood if they wanted to 1. Have life in them 2. Obtain eternal life 3. Resurrect at the last day 4. Share life with Jesus, just like that of Jesus and the Father 5. Live forever 
Friends, Catholic scholars believe that Jesus was actually speaking about real meal. Jesus' invitation to eat his flesh and drink his blood prefigures his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, which Jesus instituted at the Last Supper when he changed the bread and wine into his body and blood, which his disciples were commanded to eat and drink in order to live forever. When the flesh and blood are separated, death results. But by taking both, they will partake in his eternal life. Friends, some scholars, particularly non-Catholics, suggest that Jesus' statement is much more figurative and spiritual than literal. The word flesh refers to Jesus, a human person, in the same way as in John chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh. Here Jesus referred to himself as a bread that nourishes for the life of the world. His flesh, his person, is the bread. He is the word, and he offers fullness of life to those who accept that he is from heaven, sent by God the Father to bring salvation to the world. And just as eating and drinking are necessary for physical life, so also is the belief in his word and his sacrificial death on the cross necessary for eternal life. The eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood therefore metaphorically symbolize the need for accepting and believing Jesus' word and his sacrificial death on the cross. Friends, what is the message for us? We can take the reference Jesus made to eating his flesh and drinking his blood literally or figuratively, but either way results in eternal life. Both believing in Christ and eating his flesh and drinking his blood lead us to everlasting life. Therefore, one, just as we take food and drink into a body which then become part of us in nourishing and sustaining our life, so too must we eat the body and drink the blood of Christ in the Holy Eucharist, so that we will have life in us, receive eternal life, rise in the resurrection on the last day, have a mutually abiding relationship and live forever. 2. As we eat of Jesus, share in the bread and wine or food of his words, we must look in faith to his sacrifice and death on the cross. When we truly turn our life over to our Lord Jesus by believing in him, he gives us eternal life full of peace and joy. Amen. God bless you.